Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're coming to you live from Fresno, California, and I am honored to have a wonderful individual with us, and it's uh, Coach Linda Gaza, the head softball coach of the almighty Fresno State Bulldogs, Lady <laughs> Bulldogs. Did I say it right? The Fresno State Bulldogs. We're good <laughs> <Okay>. enough. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thank you for Absolutely. Um, talking to me and allowing us to come to your home. Um, I talked to you a couple times, and uh, what we want to let the people out there know about the recruiting process, the Division One, whether it's Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three process, and they and they all vary. Absolutely. But in the Division One process, I, I thought it was very important when we talked initially for for the people to hear what it, the process really likes. So I guess the first question I have for you is, if you were a parent, mm -hmm. what would you What's the information you need to know and that's pertinent for somebody that would be getting recruited by you? You know, every sport's different. However, in recruiting, you're still doing the same thing. So, you know, every coach at any school, you know, has an amount of athletes that they're trying to attract to their university and trying to get to compete at their school. And every school has different visions and goals. For us, obviously, at Fresno State, we're fortunate enough to be a place that softball is very good and it's had very good rich history for over 30 years Definitely. so you know I'm blessed to have that opportunity to be able to sell and when I say sell to be able to talk about and it's relevant it's real you can go look it up you can find it uh, if I'm a parent you have to do your homework I really think not enough people out there everything is what they see on TV, what they either read on the internet, or you have some that don't look at any of those things. You know, I think it's important to talk to players who have been in the organization under that coach is one thing. Okay. Um, I think it's good to know good and bad because our job is to put together the best presentation that we can um, of our entity, which is our business, which is our program. So for parents out there, I think it's very, very important to understand that we're on our best behavior when we're recruiting anybody. I mean, a lot of people, you know, I, I don't want to give out all the goods, but really, I mean, that's, you know, it's like going out on a first date, you right. know, you're going to, you're going right. to get dressed up. You're going to look a certain way. Um, but do your research. I think that's, if we can do anything, do your research from an academic perspective, do your research from a retention, which is how do they keep their kids? Do their kids graduate? Um, go look up the, the majors that the kids on the roster are having, you know, are they all in psychology? Are they all tend to be in one? I think, you know, depending on what you're looking for, every tier of program is going to look at something different. So that would be my first thing that I would kind of do is do your research on the coaching staff, on the roster, on the school. Also, um, I've told people something very simple go to the campus absolutely it seems at times people are afraid to approach mm -hmm. you all or to even come and knock on your door and ask what are the requirements to even come yes. to Fresno State do I even meet the requirements absolutely. academically or athletically to come here and, yes. and really that's just a knock on the door or a drop by the admissions mm -hmm. office yeah. Do you have people that have been proactive like that and have come to you? Yeah. You know, when we're recruiting somebody, you know, obviously when we're going after somebody, we're going to do our research to see, do they fit our academic needs? Do they, do they fit our demographic? Do they fit all of these things that we look for? That's our job. So, of course, we're going out to find. For athletes out there that are doing the same thing to us and are interviewing schools, one of the beautiful things about being on the West Coast is you can get to a lot of schools fairly simple and inexpensively. Um, yes, it does cost some money, but if you're going to be going to a Southern California AAU tournament and it happens to be through some, through a few campuses, um, absolutely I would take my kid, even if I'm not stopping by to see a coach, to drive through it. Get to know what the city is around. Utilize the opportunity that you're going up north, that you're going to the Central Coast, that you're going south. You're going to be a Nationals in Texas. Go knock out as many universities that you can because they're all different. Doesn't mean you're going to know everything, but your kid or your child is going to have an opportunity to see, hmm, I liked it. Wow, that's big. That's small. Right. Um, I like this area. I didn't like it. I hate how far the airport was from when we came in. 
uh, those things are all relevant and you know those are the things that I think we as parents need to do a better job of educating ourselves and utilizing our own resources to do our own information because when it's time to make those decisions and when it's time that three week period when you're trying to make every decision you're going to wish that you would have taken those three years prior to to have visited some of these campus to maybe scratch some off the list so that when somebody calls it may not even be an option it's just your kid may say mom i just it just it doesn't i didn't like it so that one doesn't get on the table because they don't need to be on the table if if they're not relevant now how do you handle that that's that's a great point you brought up so say if a kid is a five star four star mm -hmm. and they have 30 to 50 offers and i know you've been on the winning side of those Absolutely. and i know you've been on the losing side mm -hmm. of those can you give um the parents and kids an example of how to handle that suppose somebody they really like you mm -hmm. but they're they're a kid from colorado who doesn't want to leave the area how 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 does that go honesty to me and being transparent is will get you far <laughs> You know, I don't have to remember what I say to athletes if, as long as I'm honest and transparent. As it, but not everybody is like that. So uh, I still believe in you need to know your athlete and you need to know your kid. If your kid needs to have you in the stands, that's how they play. That you're a family that's built around being able to be part of that college experience. Then you need to look at schools that are in house, um, within driving distance. Right. That is a reality. It's important. Yes, because. You know, say, for example, I get University X that's in Midland, Texas, or wherever, and I fall in love with that coach and all of those things. That's only one part of the piece of that puzzle. So if it doesn't work out, don't string anybody along because it's no different. I, you know, I hate to relate things to dating or anything else, but if it's not the one, it's okay. It's not the one. Allow that person to go find something else and allow that also your athlete, your child, to focus on what actually is on the table because that's how they're gonna get that answer a little faster. Awesome, so people we wanna understand, academics, athletics, mm -hmm. social acceptance in the environment. Those are three major important things. Now, big one, me and you have talked about this, <laughs> and it's a little, you know where I'm about sticky. to go. It's, it's sticky. sticky. Let's talk about the the abundance it seems in the last two years, all we hear is the word offer. Yeah. I get an offer. I have an offer, an offer. When I was a kid, my wife was a kid getting recruited. We got letters. Yes. And the cool thing was you fill your Nike boxes up Absolutely. with letters. And you count letters and you go to your buddies. How many letters did you get? How many letters did you Absolutely. get? Absolutely. Well, nobody, nobody gave us an offer because we had to pass admissions. We had to take our SATs. Mm -hmm. We had a, a number of things we had to do to even qualify. So Stanford could essentially send me a great letter. But I think my SAT score was like 1150. So I wasn't getting, we getting I wasn't going, I was, I wasn't going to yeah. Stanford either. <laughs> so, so the offer kind of was like a great piece of paper. I have it, Absolutely. But, but I wasn't going to go <laughs> there. So let's talk about offers, what that is, and, and the problems with that now. You know, I under, in, in our industry and in softball, it, it is starting to get very early. And when I say early, I mean, you're getting eighth graders and seventh graders who are getting national looks from top five top 15 programs and when we are seeing talent i'm going to say we because we're all our coaches when we are seeing talent and we see it at a level that we truly believe that this it's going to be a four-star recruit it is what it is um coaches are finding ways to to basically say yes i have this x amount of money available for so and so and they're not finding I, I, I tell people, you know, I mean, it, and I'm not saying, you know, because our word is our word, you know. Can you say that one more time? <laughs> they're not binding. They're not binding. I think, you know, a lot of people, not, the reason why I tell people this is um, I've held, you know, my word and those sort of things, but not everybody is me. Um, it's a two-way street. I've also held somebody's word and something else comes up that they weren't anticipating and they've derailed and decided to go somewhere else. But the most common theme that is happening, and it's happened, I was most recently at UC Riverside, and I was going into my fifth season, and we had some what we would call verbal commitments um, of athletes who intended to come to Riverside. We were still actively recruiting them, but the way and the lingo for a parent would be a verbal commitment type right. thing. Um, and then, you know, my dream job comes up here at Fresno State, 
and making now those phone calls to those athletes and saying, hey, I know, you know, we talked about you being at UC Riverside and I'm no longer going to be there. Um, and I don't know if you're the athlete that fits where I'm going at the next place. And that family has been a diehard, you know, commitment. And now what does that family do? You know, that's what I don't think that we spend enough time on to understand. And even me that I'm trying to educate our coaches is, is this what's best for the game? I know what's best for top university one, right. university two. If I can keep the top kids and I've shown that I'm 25 years at this institution, the likelihood is, yes, I am going to be there. But what about for our sport? There's 305 division one schools maybe only the top 15 top 20 have some seniority where you're seeing coaches truly there for 10 plus years so what's going on with everybody else if we're all doing that that's what concerns me and would concern me as a parent so when we talk about nothing that's binding when that coach should leave that athletic director has to make a decision on am i going to honor or am i not some may say I'm going to leave it in the hands of the new hire of the coach and let them go and re evaluate these athletes and decide. Some may say we want a fresh start. We never liked where the direction of the program was going. We want to go completely off the grid. We want to go more in-state. This coach was going out of state. We want to go more in-state or vice versa. We, we need to get out of state. Um, we want to go international. Um, so what I would say is be careful. Be careful. I mean, I, I, the reason I say it is because um, an injury can happen. You know, your athlete, your kid, and they may not be the same person they were three years ago and all of a sudden somebody pulls it. Or flip side, you may find out your kid, you know, gra you know wants to go to University X and you realize that that's not in the best interest and we got to go a different direction and now you feel like you're letting that coach down. Right. Um, so I, I believe that when we did it, I took my visits. Right. I took offic official visits. I didn't go on any unofficial. I put the dollar on the campuses. We were forced to go and have to pick the five schools. Um, I do believe the integrity of the NCAA is that the process should be made with a 16, 17 year old mind. Right. That, that's, that's the biggest thing. Um, am I being asked to go and recruit younger athletes in my position, yeah, we're a top 25 institution. Absolutely. Um, it makes me nervous every single day. I know I want to be at Fresno State. I know this is my dream place. Uh, does a 14-year-old, though? Right. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I asked my nephew, he's 14, what kind of car he wants. If I ask him today, it's going to be a truck. If I ask him next week, it's a sports car. And if I ask him the following week, it's a sedan. Um, so I don't, I, don't, I can't even begin to ask the colors of it that's that's too right. much but i think that's something that we need to talk about or at least educate those on that's a that's a big big issue right now across the board mm -hmm. in all sports um and especially in the money sports i say when i say money sports i'm saying when there's a lucrative opportunity yes. possibly at the end of yes. college um at the end of a matriculation period some yep. kids are leaving sophomore year, junior year, depending on what sport. Absolutely. Um, and then we also see the divvying up of monies. Um, so if a roster, for instance, explain how people, because everybody says they got a full ride. <laughs> they love, I love that word too, full ride. That's an old word. That, they shouldn't even use that word anymore. No, because it's, it's not it's relevant It's not as anymore. relevant. To, okay, so a lot of people don't realize that it, add in, I'm going to talk Division One athletics because that's what I'm most familiar with. Okay. So, um, you have your what we call headcount sports and then you have um, percentage sports type thing. So headcount sports are your volleyball, your men's and women's basketball and football. Okay. Any athlete who's on a scholarship, everything's co covered. So whether it's the punter that's on scholarship and the star quarterback, if you're on a football roster and you have earned an athletic scholarship, it's at 100%. Okay. And that's anywhere. Second, is if you're now on what we call a percentage um, or countable sport, you're gonna be the soccers, softball, baseball, track and field, um, pretty much anything else outside of those sports that we just talked about. Those athletes, each sport, NCAA designates every 
sport with a specific number that they can max out at. So I'm going to talk softball. We can max out at 12. We are allowed 12 NCAA scholarships. Let's not forget the smaller schools may not even have a fully funded, so they may be operating off of five, but for our sport, we give, we're given 12. Each coach can do these things a different way. You can go after 12 studs and just go, I'm going to go all in. Yeah. I can go after 24 kids and say, I'm going to give them each 50%. Or I can say, this one's at this, this one's at this, this one's at this. Okay. Um, I say, be careful because it's not always about the money. Because I've seen a lot of kids on everything pain and they're still calling their parents within three months of being at that school and saying, I don't care what it's going to be. And there's nothing worse than I think than getting a phone call from a kid that they're completely unhappy and you wish that you would have made that $5,000 decision six months prior to have sent the kid to the, where the school that they maybe wanted to go, but it wasn't completely right. what somebody would say a full ride. Two, we need to look at out-of-pocket expenses, okay? Whether I'm at 50% at a private school, or I'm 50% at a smaller school that's a state school maybe, and in California we have state schools and UC schools, everything's different. But I'm talking is what's the true out of pocket that it's gonna cost me? Because if my kid is great at business, and they get a business scholarship, and then they happen to qualify for FAFSA, and then they get this athletic scholarship for an additional 20, and it's actually all covered, do you really care as a parent where it's coming from as long as it's helped? It's helped you. You know, and I think we lose sight of those sort of things because our ego gets involved and we want it to be all athletic. Right. And let's talk about this real quick. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the difference between an endowment or a, or academic scholarship being packaged, I'll use the word yes, package, packaged, and a little bit of FAFSA, and then some athletic. What people don't realize is sometimes with the 100% athletic, people are under the impression that oh, it's fully guaranteed all four years, it's full ride. I said, maybe Bo Jackson's was like that. <laughs> but people that I know... Year to year. It's been year to year. Mm -hmm. um, some Division One schools and some of the BCS conference, you will see they will hand out multi-year contracts, which means that basically when they sign your athlete, they are committing to that level. And then it will also say this year, next year, the following year, the following year. Some play, some schools, some sports will do it, okay? You can ask for it. Every university is different. Every sport within that university is different, okay? So track and field could use this. Softball could use this. Soccer could use this. Just depends. Um, the reason everything has traditionally been a year to year, to allow both sides to evaluate the year before, and to see if this is still working in the way that it's supposed to be working. That's the way I believe the true foundation of NCAA as to why everything was a year to year. Um, with that being said, you know, you still don't see a lot when somebody gets injured that somebody takes. Have I seen it? Yes, I have seen it, okay? I've seen also kids make bad decisions in college and they're not the right fit. And a coach who doesn't talk to a parent anymore because their kid's an adult now Right. Um, isn't the right fit for the program and they've had countless interactions and they say hey we need to go a different direction and the full ride turns into 50 and I've also seen where the coach changed this doesn't work and you see a kid that trickles down their, their money um, I, I think of college athletics as a job you're going in for a job and somebody's giving you a baseline salary and your job is to go keep your job and your job is to hopefully go get a raise hopefully to stay wherever you're at um, but it ultimately comes with doing what you're supposed to be doing. And I also think as a coach, you have an expectation. When I go and recruit somebody and I think they're a full ride kid, so to speak, um, I am committing to them at a very high level for what I think is going to be an investment back to me. Are there kids that don't pound out? Yes. And we wear it as coaches. Not everybody does, but some do. My point, though, is if I'm going to be fully committed, I always tell kids, if I'm going all in, you know that I expect you to be all in with me. All in means go to class, do your work, be coachable, be a good teammate, be in the weight room and lead, and perform. You know, when those things start not adding up, yeah, you're going to come into my office, and yeah, we're going to have some heart-to-heart -heart talks well, because, discussion. yeah, it's no di But that's what life is, and I think we forget to tr try to utilize this opportunity as four years to get our son or daughter ready for what real life is going to be because I have yet to see somebody go and hire anybody whether we're talking Costco or whether we're talking the big wig of saying, 
Yeah, you have infinite years with me. Just show up. Right. <laughs> right. You know, it doesn't work in my well, industry. Yeah. I don't know if it works in yours. No, and for some reason, it's that's the perception, and I and I I wonder, do people really believe that there's a scholarship fairy, and everything's <laughs> gonna work out, and the coach said it's gonna be great, and my kids gonna do everything that I told them to do in yeah. high school, and please understand, people, that. Your children will be different when they leave your nest. Yes. And they're going to tell their coaches things that they're not going to tell you. Mm -hmm. um, and the coach is going to know about things that you're not going to know about. <laughs> and and it's a business relationship. And um, I know I've experienced it yeah. personally. And um, and I just, I just think that people need to have a real understanding of what's real. Not sexy talk. Not smoke and mirrors. Yes. Just uh, the real deal. So, I mean, with that said, I want to thank you for sharing some time with us. Absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. and hopefully uh, people can uh, use this information to help them make things a little clearer. And um, do you want to tell anybody, as far as if they have any questions about getting in touch with you at Fresno State or anyone at Fresno State or is there a certain office that they can reach out to? You know, I mean, you can Fresno always, State? you know, you can always, I'll, I'll let you go and tag me in terms of, of Instagram and Twitter and things like that. You okay. know, obviously we're limited on the amount of correspondence we can have on certain ages. So, you know, about 2018 graduates and things that we can kind of communicate with those types of families, anything outside of that. Contact admissions, you can always call. Uh, you know, we can maybe not call back, don't be afraid if we haven't called back. Just keep trying and hopefully somebody picks up that phone. You know, the reason that you and I are trying and why we talk about this is I love what I do and I have a passion for coaching. Um, I happen to coach at Fresno State. That's just one identity of me. I've coached at many universities. I've been in the SEC, I've been in the Big Ten, I've been at private schools, I've been at smaller schools. Um, my, my passion for is having young people be able to use their athletic talents if they can to go get educated you know at the end of all of this as much as many of us would love to know that our son or daughter is going to get a pro contract in some right. sport the reality is is that's maybe three percent of the of the norm so the important part in picking this is and i tell this to my athletes or whatever i recruit and this is what i believe any coach i want three things i want you to graduate I want to make the best person and softball player that I can make, and I want to make sure you enjoy your experience. To me, I don't care what, if you're talking football, track and field, if we're talking swimming and diving, any of those things. If my kid graduated, became a better person and a better player, may not be all conference, may not even be a starter on it, but truly did become somewhat better and they enjoyed their experience, slam dunk, I won on that college. And that's what we need to, I think if we can get to that place, the, the dust is going to settle on the trophy at some point. Right. Okay. But the degree is the meal ticket. I always say, I don't want them coming back to your house when they're done here. Right. Okay. Um, you know, there's a lot of great schools that I, there can be some All-American players, but I see a lot of All-Americans sometimes coming back home. Yep. And that's not my plan, you know, so... If I was giving parents like what we talked about and the reason why you and I are talking is do your research. Understand who your kid is. Don't get caught up in the hype of in your AAU or whatever your involvement is that you know you have to look sexy with the school that you pick. The key is pick your school and make it sexy. And I think if we can do that part, it's okay. Uh, you know, I've, I've walked into apartments that feel way more than a home than the mansion that some people live in. No. Um, your job is, and our job is, to help these parents and help these young people pick the right school. Because if you help them pick the right school, and my school happens to be the right school, that kid has a chance to be great on the field. When they're happy, they can be great. When they're not, and they're caught up in the madness, and they're not, it's so hard to pull the athleticism because 18 to 22, year olds I don't care if you ask any parent out there those are the toughest years of your life because you're trying to figure out who you are exactly. and you're doing it by yourself exactly. so I'm excited thank you so much for having me I appreciate it thank you I appreciate you back <laughs> hey so you got it there's no excuse to not know
We're going to give you the information. Why? Because Coach Pete said so. <laughs> Peace.